Papaji's love lives in me every day. I just felt this connection, felt alive, felt a joy, felt an aliveness. Swami Kripalu was born in India uh, just over 100 years ago, and he came to the United States to be with all of us at Kripalu Ashram and made a huge impact on our lives. And he feels as alive today in some ways as he did when we were there for the people who both, both have met him and some of the people who have never met him. The first time that Swami Kripalu came, I had a very strong sense of excitement and anticipation and not knowing what to expect. And so we gathered, I believe it was midnight at JFK. We were dressed in our whites. I think we were chanting in, the, in an annex room at the airport. And then Swami Kripalu stepped in and he sat in front of us and there was an immediate like energetic uplift in the room. And I believe he actually spoke or, or chanted. And, and we didn't expect that because he had been practicing silence for, for 12 years. So when he did that, we all just like were amazed at the uh, sound of his voice and, and uh, the chant that he, that he gave to us that, that evening. Bapaji, who had only spoken publicly several times a year and practice silence a lot, spoke to us every day for, for hours. So we would gather a few hundred of us and he would uh, give darshan or uh, we'd be in his audience. And in that he would chant and also tell stories. And those stories were teaching stories. And uh, in that, Bapaji was a, a storyteller before he actually became a yogi when he was younger. He was a playwright. He was a writer. So he, he, he didn't lose that <laughs> as a yogi. He was near the river Narmada, and it was monsoon season. And so you can imagine the raging waters that were in that river. And he just wandered in to the river and got swept up by the current. And he starts calling out to Dadaji, you know, save me. And he hears Dadaji say to him, uh, stop swimming, Swami. And so he stopped swimming. And he was just carried up on the top of the current and carried down river. And then meanwhile, there were some disciples or whatever, they're running along the, the banks of the river, just, you know, thinking that he's drowned. And then he gets popped out down river onto the onto the bank. And um, about five years ago, I was going in for total knee replacements. And so one of the ways I got through that was mantra. And I would say to myself, and Alice would say to me, um, stop swimming, Shanti. You know, just, just accept, just, you know, let yourself feel taken care of. You know, stop swimming, Shanti. There was a celebration one time where we were all um, going up to him and sort of receiving his energetic blessing. And what happened for me was that he bopped me on the head with his hand, um, a significant touch. <laughs> and I felt like, I felt that he had marked me as one of his children. And it wasn't something that I felt was special in the sense that it was that he chose me, but it was, it was, it was, in the sense that, that don't forget this, you know. And so in my, in my life since then, I feel like that seed has sprouted and grown into, um, you know, my dharma, my, my living of this with him beside me, behind me, and with me. People over the years have been attracted to Kripalu Center and that people that never saw Bapaji years after he, he was here feel this strong connection to him. His being and his heart, whether he's already embodied again or not, he's definitely holding space for all of us to continue on the path. Bapaji's primary message was love. To find love and happiness and joy. It's all about the love. It's all about love. 
Jai Bhattaji. Thank you. He just wanted us all to be happy. Bhauti prayatna karta rejo. Go on practicing with love. Abhyas karta rejo. Go on practice. Prabhu ni kripa uttarti joshe anitam ni prakash murtu joshe. The grace of Lord will continue to descend upon you and you will continue to grow. Finish. <laughs>